Tanu and Manu's marriage falls apart after four years. To get over the trauma, Manu ends up falling for a younger girl, Kusum, who looks exactly like Tanu. Tanu and Manu get married in a beautiful ceremony with their family and friends. Four years later, they find themselves outside a mental asylum in London. The psychiatrist, Dr. Goswami, wants to learn more about their relationship. While Manu doesn't even remember when they got married, Tanu knows all the details. She claims their problems started four years ago, when Manu tricked her into marrying him. She claims she was in love with a man called Raja Awasthi. Manu keeps interrupting, so she gets angry and decides to sit away from him. Manu informs Dr. Goswami that he is a doctor too. In his professional opinion, his wife might be suffering from a bipolar disorder. He thinks she has severe anxiety issues and acute hysteria. Goswami thinks he's describing women in general, because of which Tanu seems normal to him. With some reassurance, Tanu comes back to explain her side of the story. She was in living in India's Kampur when Manu fell in love with her. She was excited to marry a real doctor and come with him to London. But she soon realized that he's struggling, since they lived in horrible surroundings. She made him shift to the countryside, but there are no people around for entertainment. She remembers the time Manu expressed love, and there was excitement in their marriage. They had many dinners and drank together, but the spark soon vanished, which Manu wants to clarify. He thinks he's not an entertainer, and there's just so much he can do to help her. She admits that Manu never had a personality or a sense of humor before their wedding too. She is tired of how boring he is and misses the happening life she had in India. She never used to work at home, but she has even washed his clothes and cooked for him in London. She even opened a children's crush, but she thinks he still doesn't respect her. Manu suggests these are all lies, because they had an arranged marriage with the consent of their families. He points out how his friends stopped visiting when Tanu threw a bottle on someone's head. Her crash also shut down because she served alcohol to kids to shut them up. He remembers a traumatic police case, and the time she flirted with foreigners in a pub. Tanu justifies that too, because she feels there's no opportunity to flirt with Manu. She thinks all men are same and just want sex. Manu reminds her that they had sex many years ago, and gets worked up when she keeps blaming him. Tanu even claims he's a pervert, and kissed her once in the beginning when she was asleep. He reminds her she was drunk at the time, but all these accusations make him angry. All this works against him, because he is admitted in the hospital for his issues. Tanu continues to live her life without him, and follows her routine. Her friend, Pale, calls to inform her that she had a baby girl. She informs her about Manu being in the mental asylum for misbehaving in front of a psychiatrist. Pale offers help, but Tanu is already planning to go back to Kampur. Tanu realizes they must be mistreating Manu at the hospital. She calls his brother, Pappy, in India, and asks him to get Manu out. It has been three days, and he doesn't have his phone or credit card. Tanu arrives in Kanpur, and meets her old friend, Deepak. They shared a past, but he is married now with a daughter. It was tough for him to get over Tanu, but he had to take on responsibilities after his father passed away. When she arrives home, she asks Deepak to keep some money because she knows he's struggling financially. Tanu's father, Rajendra Trivedi, is shocked that she's friends with a rickshaw driver. But he's in for a bigger shock when he learns Manu is in the mental asylum. Chintu from Rampur has been renting Tanu's old room from the past six months. He is studying law and threatens the family with it every time they try to make him pay. No one wants to deal with him, but Tanu asks him to vacate her room in three days. She can tell he won't be convinced easily, so she decides to deal with him later. She calls Pappy to remind him to not waste time, because a mental asylum can be very brutal. Chintu has heard a lot about Tanu, and feels like she's the Batman of the neighborhood. He has heard many stories of there being two grooms at her wedding, and shots being fired. Pappy signs the papers to release Manu from the asylum. He claims to be in love with Komal, the girl he met at Jassy's wedding, who is Pale's husband. Pappy claims she likes him too, and they want to get married. Manu keeps ignoring her and Pappy rants about how tough it is to convince her family for the wedding. On their flight to India, Manu loses patience and asks him to stop. Manu reminds him what marriage has done to him, and feels Pappy is stupid for wanting that too. Tanu gets a hate message from Manu, and is glad he has been released. A family has come to see her sister, Ankita, for an arranged marriage. Tanu comes out in just her towel, and shocks everyone. She asks the guy what he does for a living, and makes fun of him being in an IT firm. She asks more pressing questions about why he wants to marry, and any previous girlfriends. He seems very scared of her, so Tanu addresses Ankita. She asks Ankita to take up another activity, instead of getting married to a boring man like him. 
The guy's family leaves after being humiliated. But this seems normal to Tanu's family, who are used to this behavior from her. Jintu is finally impressed with her, and can't control his laughter. Manu discusses divorce with his dad, because he thinks there's nothing left between them. He has been tortured for four years, and the asylum incident has been the final nail in the coffin. His mother keeps ranting in the background about how hard her life is. She has to cook for everyone, and she isn't happy about it. Manu's father has been dealing with a troubled marriage for 40 years, but instead of complaining, he prefers to drink to feel better. He doesn't think Manu will benefit from a divorce. He will either end up alone, or find someone else. Even if there's someone else, there's no guarantee his second marriage will work too. He thinks the rule of society dictates that men and women marry to eventually get bored of each other. He asks Manu to tolerate it for as long as he can. Pappy finds a divorce lawyer, Faisal, for Manu. Faisal gives him an option of ascending a divorce notice, or a regular one. While a divorce notice is supposed to be final, a regular one still has a chance for hope. He suggests Manu should send a regular one since he's too emotional at this point. Tanu is considering apologizing to Manu when Chintu announces he has finally become a lawyer. Tanu gets a letter from Manu claiming that she has crossed all limits. But he still thinks there's a chance, and is ready to forgive if she apologizes. This seems like an insult to Tanu, but she congratulates Chintu for getting his first case as a divorce lawyer with her. She takes off all the jewelry she wears as a sign of a married woman. She decides to move on, and makes Chintu drop her to the houses of all her exes in the neighborhood. She tries to bond with them, and their families while Manu waits for a response from her. She finally brings Chintu to Raja's house, her infamous ex who wanted to marry her. She teases Raja about becoming religious. When he asks about Manu, she doesn't give a direct reply. Raja is excited, because he has finally found a girl he wants to marry. Tanu pretends she's hurt he's committed now that she is free. She wants to leave with Chintu, but Raja stops him. Chintu claims he's her shoulder to cry on after Manu betrayed her. He jokes about how Raja can take over for him next. Raja thinks this is insulting to Tanu, and asks Chintu to stay in his limits. Manu still hasn't heard from Tanu, but Pappy thinks she'll come crying back to him when she realizes her mistake. He also asks Manu to consider helping him so they can meet Komal's family. Manu feels bad for bringing everyone's energy down with him. He needs to give a lecture at the Delhi University the next day, but promises to go to Chandigarh after that to meet Komal's family in the middle of his lecture. Manu spots a girl who looks just like Tanu. He gets distracted and pretends Pappy is an expert doctor who will take over for him. As Manu chases after her, Pappy tries to answer the students' questions. When they keep asking about heart diseases, he pretends there's some pain in his chest. Manu finds her running towards him, and feels like Tanu has realized her mistake. But when she crashes into him, he realizes she is Kusum. She is studying in the college, and complains to her friend, Pinky, about the weird man standing in the middle of her pitch. A team of doctors is about to transport Pappy to the ambulance on a stretcher. Manu asks him to get into the car and drives away with him. Pappy is hurt about the humiliation, but Manu is more interested because he still believes Kusum is Tanu. Pappy is sure she's not Tanu because her teeth are very different. They still chase after the bus Kusum got into, and it becomes clear she is not Tanu. Pale calls Tanu when she's feeling nervous at her daughter's function. Tanu informs her about how great Raja was looking, but she advises her to not get into the mess. Pale is already feeling guilty, because the baby is not Jassy's. Tanu finds this situation more exciting, and promises to be there for her in Chandigarh. Raja blushes when he remembers his interaction with Tanu. Manu brings Pappy to Kusum's college again. Pappy is sure they will see Manu as a pervert following a young girl. They get into a bus with Kusum and Pinky, and watch from a distance. Kusum acts tough when the bus conductor asks for her ticket. While Manu is impressed with her, Pappy is afraid she herself will beat them up. They follow her to the market too, and get into the same rickshaw. Kusum asks about Manu's stomach, because she hit him the other day. She then takes out her hockey stick, and asks which one of them he's following. Manu tries to explain he's not a pervert, but the girls start beating them up. They only stop when Manu shows a photo of Tanu, and explains that she looks like his wife. Kusum and Pinky agree there is some similarity. Kusum also feels bad about his ongoing divorce, but she clarifies that she's a national-level athlete, and not the woman he is searching for, but she offers to be there for him as a friend if he needs it. That night, Pappy complains about getting beaten up because of Manu's obsession. He knows Manu is thinking about starting something with Kusum, and warns him against it. Kusum dances after she passes her exams, 
and agrees to celebrate with Monyu and Pappy. They decide to go boating, where Kusum admires the weather. She asks him to sing, but starts singing in a horrible voice herself when he doesn't. Monyu is impressed with her innocent confidence and starts hanging out with her a lot more. He gifts her expensive earrings, but she loses them on the field during practice. She gets hassled and realizes she can't get distracted like this. Raja approaches Tanu, and Chintu starts getting jealous when they hang out a lot more. Kusum returns the earrings to Manyu, because she doesn't think they have a future. She has family responsibilities, and came to Delhi to make a name for herself in sports. She can't get swayed away in love, especially with a married man like him. She informs him that her brother's wife has already found a man she can marry. She ends their relationship, and leaves for home in tears. Manu gets a divorce notice from Tanu, and Chintu calls him moments later as her lawyer. He informs Manu about Tanu hanging out with Raja, a lot more these days. Manu decides to head to Kusan's house to talk to her elder brother, Om Prakash, for marriage. Chintu finally gives Rajendra his six months of rent. He claims he was in tears thinking about his situation. He asks Rajendra to invest his money carefully, because his daughter is out of control. He informs Rajendra that Tanu has been hanging out with Raja again. Om Prakash had a love marriage too, so he claims he is not against the idea. But he asks Manu to discuss this with Kusum first. Manu admits to Kusum that he has been in love before. He started hating the idea of marriage when his own suffered. He feels something is special in Kusum to make him believe in love again. He promises to keep her happy and support her in whatever she does. Om Prakash informs Pappy that his wife has already chosen someone else to marry Kusum. He shows him the photo, and Pappy gets shocked. Pappy is sure they will get slayed this time, because Manu has again chosen to love a woman Raja is promised to. Kusum turns up at Manu's house, but his mother mistakes her for Tanu. She starts scolding Kusum for ruining her son's life, till Manu explains the situation. Tanu is angry at Chintu for informing her dad about the time she spent with Raja. Chintu admits he is in love with her, and has even told Manu about him. He confesses about sending Manu the divorce papers too. She doesn't like that Chintu assumed he has a right over her just because she was nice to him. Chintu is tired of just being a mode of transport for her, and wants something more. Raja comes to beat Chintu, but he thinks Tanu and Manu have destroyed his life. Manu's courage has impressed Kusum, because he's willing to fight for her. She likes Manu, and has decided to fight for their relationship too. He assures Kusum that he loves her, so she asks him to come with her to her village in Jajar to convince her family. But Pappy's situation seems more urgent because Komal is getting married in three days, so Kusum agrees to help him first, and they decide to head to Chandigarh. Raja explains that he agreed to marry Kusum just because she looks like Tanu, but now, Manu wants her too, and is flirting around with his fiance. Raja claims he's a simple man who doesn't like complications. He asks Tanu to either help him get his fiance back or come back to him. When Pappy, Manu and Kusum arrive in Chandigarh, Tanu tries to find out where Manu is. She claims she's still his legal wife, and can put his parents in jail for making him marry someone else. Komal is Jassy's cousin, so Pappy tries to hide from him and pale at the wedding. He is worried about how Jassy will react when he finds out he is trying to steal the bride. Jassy is Manu's friend, so he thinks he can reason with him. But Pappy doesn't let him go either, and asks Kusum to take over. He has a strange kind of confidence that she can handle the situation. He asks Kusum to look for Komal, and inform her about him being there. Kusum agrees to help, but Manu points out that people will recognize her because she looks like Tanu. Pappy realizes his mistake, and they both try to find Kusum. She asks around for Komal, but Pale recognizes her as Tanu. She runs away, but Jassy finds Manu and is glad to see him there. Kusum confronts Komal and asks her to consider Pappy's feelings for her. Komal seems very confused because she also mistakes Kusum for Tanu. Jassy is excited about having his best friend, Manu, at the wedding. Komal informs Pappy that she doesn't love him, and only thinks of him as a good friend. He thinks her laughing at his jokes on text was very misleading. He had assumed she likes him too, and feels bad about doing so much to find her. Pale finds Kusum again, and starts ranting to her since she thinks she is Tanu. She explains how everyone was putting pressure on her to have a child. They got all the tests done and learned that Jassy is impotent. When Jassy is drinking with Manu, he confesses that he's getting married again. Komal asks Pappy to stop following her, because she has decided to marry someone else. Pale explains that after exploring all options, someone suggested she should get artificial insemination. She has spent millions on injections for the test tube baby, but now feels guilty. 
Jassy finds Pappy gesturing to Manu and is excited to see him. Pappy makes a comment and disappears. Manu pretends Pappy was never there and suggests that Jassy has had too much to drink. Pale is still ranting about how no one knows this child isn't Jassy's. Husum keeps trying to go to the bathroom, but Pale doesn't let her. When she doesn't stop ranting, Kusum uses a karate move to injure her neck. When Pappy finds Kusum, she asks him to get Komal, but he feels her in about how Komal doesn't love him. Kusum agrees to talk to her once for him. Kusum distracts everyone in the room so she can confront Komal. She asks Komal to give Pappy another chance, because he is a nice man. When Komal refuses to cooperate, Kusum hits her too, they drag her outside, and pretend that she's drunk. Manu finds Pale unconscious, but all the women think he did something to her. They start chasing him, so Kusum helps Manu get in the auto rickshaw with her. When Tanu gets a headache in the car, Manu's mother helps her with a medicine. Kusum's village seems empty because a local girl, Manju, is getting married that day. Kusum's younger brother is curious about Manu, so she bribes him to not tell anyone they're dating. But he runs along to the other villages and informs them about it. Everyone at the Chandigarh wedding is worried about the missing bride, Komal, when Tanu arrives. The villagers fight with Kusum for choosing a city man to get married. They think she is being too bold just because she moved out of the village. She's promised to someone else, but she doesn't care and is ready to fight for Manu. Pappy and Manu get dragged by other villagers and are tied up. But still, Manu can't help being impressed with Kusum's bravery. He falls for her more as she fights the villagers, who lock her inside. They are planning to burn Manu and Pappy when they run out of matches. Raja asks everyone to head to Kusum's village, or he's afraid Manu will marry her soon. When Alm Prakash arrives at the village, Kusum's other brother asks him for matches. He follows him inside when he learns they're planning to burn Manu and Pappy. Alm Prakash stops the villages and thinks they are ignorant. Women are taking over the world, but these villagers have no respect for them. He thinks they should be ashamed of tying down someone like Kusum, who has made a name for herself as an athlete. She could have easily eloped, but she still chose to come to the village to take permission out of respect. The village Sarpanch is worried about Manu's caste, but Om Prakash reminds him that he's a better man than all of them. He wants Kusum to be free to marry whoever she wants, and asks Manju to get her out of the room. The festivities for Manju's wedding begin, and Kusum makes Manu a part of them. Raja and the others arrive at the wedding. Tanu is relieved to find Manu is not the groom. She notices Pappy trying to sneak out and confronts him. Pappy apologizes to Jassy and claims Komal got kidnapped before he knew what was going on. They find Manu at the wedding, and Tanu pushes Raja aside to confront him. She claims she just wants to see the woman who won his heart in a few weeks. She makes fun of Kusum when she spots her, since she feels like Kusum is a cheaper version of her. Tanu asks Manu to at least care about her reputation while finding another bride. Kusum refuses to take her insults, especially since she knows Tanu has no handle over her life. Kusum is proud of taking care of herself and her family financially. She feels Tanu has no right to judge a self-made woman like her. Tanu expects Manu to defend her, but he screams at Tanu and asks Om Prakash to fix a date for his wedding with Kusum soon. Pale tries to defend Tanu, but Kusum asks her to first tell her husband about the baby. Pale is angry that a girl like Kusum ruined her and Tanu's life. Jassy doesn't want to see Pale's face again, and even Tanu's marriage is ruined. Tanu seems to be in shock, and remembers a song Pale used to sing when they were younger. She starts singing and walks around the streets in the middle of the night. She even barges into a wig shop after hours to try something that makes her look more like Kusum. She finds Manu and feels offended that he didn't stand up for her when Kusum insulted her. She admits she has always been crazy like this, but expected Manu to still be there. Manu refuses to admit that he misses her, so she walks away. While she takes off her wig and cries, Manu cries in secret too. Tanu takes Raja along to hand over the divorce papers to Manu. She is cordial with him, and apologizes to Kusum too. She claims Manu has helped her a lot, so she wants to pay him back by helping with his new wedding. Tanu starts helping out with the wedding preparations, and is willing to do any task assigned to her. Manu thinks she's up to something, and she admits she still loves him. She doesn't want to live without him, and asks him to come back home. Manu wants her to understand that he gave up on their relationship a long time ago. He has moved on now, but Tanu refuses to leave till she watches him get married. Pale leaves her baby near Jassy and goes inside to talk to Kusum. Manu is getting a suit stitched for his wedding. Raja comes to taunt him about how he keeps lucking out again and again. He thinks Manu should consider his wife's feelings. 
He thinks Manu shouldn't have married her if he wanted to treat her this way one day. He thinks all of this is a sin, and Manu is not realizing it. Manu points out that Tanu sent him the divorce papers, but Raja explains that Chintu was behind all the mess. Pale tries to reason with Kuzum. She thinks it's clear Manu and Tanu still love each other. Kuzum gets offended by her suggestion and tries to show her that Manu loves her. Manu feels bad for involving Raja in this mess again, but he thinks he has given his word to Kusum and can't go back on it. When Pale continues to rant, Kusum stops her. She understands that Pale is feeling bad about her friend, but she knows she will only cancel the wedding if Manu comes tells her himself that he doesn't want to be with her. Pale comes out to find Jassy playing with the baby, and he finally forgives her. Kusum comes to see Manu when he's getting ready and mentions the visit by Pale. Manu assures her she has nothing to worry about. He knows the past few days have been confusing, but he promises to be a good husband to her. When Manu comes out, everyone forces him to ride the horse for his wedding. When Pappy gets a drink for himself, he spots Tanu's parents. Chintu forces Tanu's father to pay for his alcohol and gets aggressive when he refuses. Manu's parents don't understand what's happening either and if they should support his marriage with Kusum. Raja thinks they all should leave but Tanu is ready to get humiliated more. She dances and drinks before Manu's wedding and celebrates like any guest would. But he still proceeds to the venue and she starts giving up hope. Everyone tries to comfort her and even Raja tries to chase Chintu away from her. Tanu feels numb, but she insists she wants to see Manu get married. The wedding ceremony begins, but Manu doesn't look too happy. Right before the ceremony is about to end, Kusum asks him to speak up for the last time. Manu has tears in his eyes and knows he can't go ahead with this marriage. Kuzum claims she doesn't want to settle for something either and asks Manu to look after his wife. Tanu thanks Kuzum for taking such a bold step. Kuzum leaves the ceremony and cries alone. Chintu starts abusing everyone and causes commotion in the wedding. He is upset Manu got Tanu again and tries to create a scene. Kuzum gets out of the room and knocks him unconscious too. Pappy tries to talk to Komal at the function, but she ignores him. Kuzum teases Raja and asks if he's going to find a third woman who looks like them. Raja has given up on marriage and doesn't want to get involved in this anymore. Tanu notices Manu is wearing the same tie she gifted him for this 40th birthday. She feels offended he doesn't care about the sentiments behind it and was even about to get married again in it.